In this video, we are looking at uh, uh, radians and looking at radians as another way of measuring rotations or angles. And we'll see that there's a few applications of using radians uh, that are, are quite useful. So we're going to convert degrees to radians first, and then we'll use radians to solve uh, some problems. Now just this idea of conversion, uh, you've all done these kind of conversions where uh, there's so many meters in a yard or change Celsius to Fahrenheit, so many kilograms in a pound, etc. And converting from radians to degrees is the same kind of thing. You're just using different units uh, to measure a rotation. So in a circle, as you know, and say we're starting here, right there, see that's where we're starting. If you go up and around all the way, you know that that's 360 degrees. Who came up with the idea of 360? Why didn't they divide a circle like into 50? Or maybe 100. 100 would be a good number. Sort of even, goes with the metric system. Anyway, somebody came up and let's said, let's divide the circle into 360. I'm sure there's a reason behind it. Um, the unit of radian measure is something that, uh, to me anyway, is just a touch more logical because it uh, uh, measures the rotation based on the radius uh, and based on the arc length or the length of, uh, as you're turning, uh, how, how, what the distance of that is. Now, one radian, if we're defining that, is uh, a radian is the turn or that, that angle that is created. One radian is uh, the angle measurement uh, that is turned when the radius, that's this radius, is equal to the arc length. That's S over here. So the distance from there all the way up to there, if S and R are the same thing, that means this angle or this rotation is one radian. So measuring radians is based on the radius and the arc length. It turns out that if you go all the way around a circle, yeah, that's 360 degrees, but for radians, uh, that's 2 pi radians. And if you take pi as uh, 3.14 and times it by 2, you get 6.28. So there's 360 degrees, or you can say 2 pi, or you can say 6.28 radians. Okay, now radians can be expressed as pi's, like I had here, or if you take pi, I should write that like this, 2 pi, if you take pi as 3.14, then if you multiply that out, uh, 6.28, this would be known as decimal radians, and these are known as pi radians. And it's useful to be able to convert between. So, um, you can convert between radians and degrees a number of different ways. Uh, typically, books show you this, uh, and that's, that's not bad, but you can also use 360 degrees is the same thing as 2 pi. That works too. They, they just use these because they're a bit sim more simplified. Anyway, you can use either one of those ratios. So if I want to convert 75 degrees into pi radians, I'm going to multiply it by one of these ratios, so that I get rid of my degrees. And to get rid of the degrees, since the degrees are on the top here, I'm going to multiply it by a ratio where the degrees are on the bottom. And then I have pi up top. Okay, then I just simplify that fraction. It's like 75 over 180. Uh, let's see. I don't know how to do that quickly. Maybe um, 5 goes into 75 15 times. And 5 goes into that 36 times. I think that's right. So 15, 36 pi. But I can probably do better than that. 3 will go into each of those. So that would be uh, 3 into 15 goes 5. And 3 into 36 goes 12. There we go. So 75 degrees is the same as 5 twelfths pi. Now, if you were to figure the pi out, 3.14... 5 times 3.14 divided by 12 is going to give you 1 point something uh, radians. And you can, you can divide that out if you want, 1.2 or something like that, rads. We typically like uh, exact angles, 
uh, but we're okay dealing with decimal uh, as well. Okay, if you wanted to convert back, if you had radians, you want to convert that to degrees, you can multiply this by the other ratio. And it's 180 degrees over pi radians. Notice I put pi on the bottom, so the pi's will cancel. Now I just have to go 4 times 180 is something, divided by 3, I think it comes out to 240 degrees. Okay, so that's how you can convert from degrees to radians or vice versa. Why don't you try a couple? Press pause, then press play. Okay, so for this first one, I want to get rid of pi, so I'm going to multiply it by that. The second one, I want to get rid of degrees, so I'll multiply it by that. Okay, and this is like pi over 1, right? So the pi is cancel. Uh, so this, I think, comes out to, you should have got 150 degrees. For this one, the degrees cancel, and 120, uh, I think that's two-thirds pi. Two-thirds pi. Hopefully you got something like that. Okay, so why do we use pi radians? Let's see a few examples where you can see them. So if I am measuring the distance around a curve, it's very useful to have uh, the rotation given to, me, given to me in radians as opposed to degrees. And you can do some conversions within the formula, but there's just a nice easy formula right here that you can use that relates the angle or the rotation and the arc length or the distance around that curve. Have you ever tried to measure a distance around a curve? <laughs> it's pretty tough with a measuring tape. It's hard to do. Typically, people just put a string or something around it, and then they'll take the string off the circle and measure it with a measuring tape or something. But you can do measuring around a circle quite easily with this formula. So as long as you know the rotation, and if you know the arc length or the radius, any, one, any two of those three things, and you can determine uh, the other one. Let's try a couple questions. So here's one. I've got a Ferris wheel. Biggest Ferris wheel in the world. I forget how much it is. This is one at Disneyland, I think. But let's say, let's say the diameter of that Ferris wheel, I don't know what it looks like, maybe 60 meters. I'm just guessing. Okay, and so what I want to know is um, what the uh, distance, I guess let's, let's figure out what is the distance around. So if you were to start uh, up here somewhere, if you can see that, and go all the way around, how far is that? Okay, so here's our formula. So the rotation is equal to the arc length and uh, the radius. Oh, they gave us a diameter. Let's cut that in half. So the radius is 30. Now the rotation, they didn't tell us what the rotation was, but they did say, ask what it is for it to go all the way around once. So if they want you to do one revolution, one revolution is the same thing as 2 pi radians. So I can use that for my theta. Okay, so here's our formula. Theta e is equal to s over r. I want to solve for s, so let's just multiply both sides by r. Cancel these. So s is going to be equal to the radius multiplied by the rotation. So the arc length is radius, 30 meters, times by the rotation. We, we want to know how far it is all the way around. So one rotation would be 2 pi radians. So 2 pi rads. Okay, so if I multiply that, I come up with 60 pi rads. Uh, now pi is 3.14. Let me just uh, plug that into our uh, decimals here, if it'll work for me. Um, so I wanted to go 60 times um, pi. There we go. 188.5, call it. 188.5. So the distance that you would travel if you started on one side and you went all the way around 188.5 meters. Why don't you try this one? 
Bike tire raised to 30. This time they're asking how many radians will the bike tire turn through if I go four, uh, 40 kilometers. Hmm. So I know the radius, um, the arc length, and typically we think of arc length as just being one circle, but it could be a ton of circles like here. So this would be our arc length, and I'm looking for the radians. How many radians will the thing turn through? Okay, so let's, let's do it. So theta is equal to S. S is 40 kilometers divided by the radius, which is 30 centimeters. Ooh, problem here. Because um, I have a kilometer and a centimeter, I need them to be in the same unit. So let's change. Let's, uh, I think there's 100,000 centimeters in one kilometer. So let's just use that conversion unit. So there's 100,000 centimeters in one kilometer. There, my kilometers now will cancel, as will my centimeters. So my answer in the end here will be in radians, because that's always the unit for um, uh, theta, for radians. Okay, so let's figure out what that'll be. So I want to go 40. Sorry, that's in behind there. Times 100,000. Five divided by 30. There, good. Okay, 133,000. So, my tire would have gone around 133,333.333. Oh no, that's how many radians. I shouldn't say how many times it went around. That was incorrect. This is how many radians it would have traveled through. Then the next question is what I was trying to answer, was how many revolutions would this be? So this is how many radians there are. Remember for one circle... If I go around one circle, that's so one revolution is the same as two pi radians. So I could convert that to revolutions. So 133,000 radians, let's write that down, 133,333 radians. And I'll multiply that by two pi radians are the same thing as one revolution of the tire. Notice I put the two pi rads on the bottom so I could cancel the rads. So now I just have to divide that 133,000 by two pi. Let's do that. One thirty three, three three three. I you could point point and add some more threes if you wanted, just to increase accuracy. Divided by uh, 2 pi. 2 and a pi. There we go. 21,220. 21,220. So this would be 21,220, well, we'll call it 1. So in that 40 kilometers, my wheel would have gone around 21,221 times. You think about that and how... The concept of wheels is quite amazing for them to go around that many times and not have troubles. Very cool technology. Here's another useful relationship that we can use if I have radian measure. And that's a conversion between an angular velocity and a linear velocity. Linear velocity is the normal velocity we think about, like going in your car, or you're going 100 kilometers an hour, that's a linear velocity. <coughs> An angular velocity is how long it takes you to go around once. Like in an engine, you have RPMs. That stands for revolutions per minute. That's an example of an angular velocity. Now, revolutions per minute are nice, and they're sort of standardized uh, when you think about something rotating. Uh, but uh, if, if I'm ever given revolutions per, per given time, I always need to convert that to radians, so that I can plug it in my formula. So this formula, V stands for linear velocity, R stands for radius, 
and uh, the W kind of sign stands for angular velocity, but it must be measured in radians per hour, radians per second, whatever. Okay, so uh, here's an example. A friend of mine, Mike, uh, was in Germany. He was uh, an instructor in our wind turbine program, an engineering program. And he was over there uh, looking at how they uh, uh, set up these wind turbines. And so he was at the top of one, and he took a picture down to see, um, just to s sort of see the size of the thing. And if you take a look right there, that's the uh, part of a semi-truck. So you can sort of get an idea of how big that, uh, that turbine is. Like, they're huge. So what I would like to do is I want to know how fast the tip of one of those turbines is traveling as the thing goes around. And all I need to know is to know what the radius of the turbine is and then how long it takes it to go around once. Uh, and once I know that, then I can figure out um, how fast you'd be going. I always thought it'd be fun maybe to strap yourself on the end of one of those turbines. <laughs> okay, a little silly. And uh, uh, see what kind of ride that would be. Well, let's see how fast you'd be going here. Okay, so turbine point 40 goes around five seconds. So your velocity, and that's what we're looking for, is equal to the radius in whatever unit. And this has to be an angular velocity, and it has to be measured in radians per given time. So uh, let's maybe just figure that out over here. Because right now I have it going around one revolution in five seconds. But I can't use that in this formula because it has to be in radians. So I can multiply this by a conversion unit that gets rid of the revolutions. So I know one revolution is the same as two pi radians. And that's what I need. So revs cancel. So my angular velocity is going to be 2 pi over 5. Uh, and that is radians per second. Okay, so now that's a number I can put in my formula. So the velocity then, the radius is 40 meters multiplied by 2 pi over 5 rads per second. So if you multiply that out, I think that'll give you, what, 16 pi? 16 pi uh, meters per second. It's interesting in here that the radians, when you use them in this formula, the radian just sort of disappears a unit. Okay, so my velocity is 16 pi meters per second. And again, I could multiply the pi out. It's nice to leave it as an exact value, but if you put your 3.14 in there, you get 50 something meters per second. So that's how fast it's going. Now, um, so I have my answer, but my answer, like knowing meters per second, that I don't have a good concept of how fast that is. So maybe it would be nice to convert that into kilometers an hour. So 16 pi meters per second. If you've taken physics, I think they have a conversion factor of 3.6 or something like that. But we can do it here. Uh, so all I need to do is convert the meters to kilometers and the seconds to hours. So meters, I know that there are a thousand meters in one kilometer. You see why I put the meters on the bottom there? Yeah, so they could cancel. And then I want to convert the seconds to hours. Well, there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 60. So there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So seconds cancel out. So the units that I'm going to be left with are kilometers and hours. And that gives me a better, like visually I can sort of figure out how fast that is. Okay, so let's try that on our uh, calculator here. Okay, so I have to go 16 pi, 16 pi times uh, 1 over 1,000. 1 divide 1,000. Good. Then I'm going to go over and then go times. And now I've got 3,600. It's over 1. I don't really need to put the 1 there. 
Anyway, there we've got our, our number. I think everything's in. Yep, so 180.9, let's call it 181. So, if you were to strap me on the <laughs> edge of that uh, turbine, as long as the radius was 40 meters and it took five seconds for it to go around once, uh, I'd be going 181 kilometers an hour and screaming. <laughs> okay. Here's another question. The swings at the carnival. I had a funny experience once, went to the carnival, and there was a carny guy there, and uh, most interesting chap. And uh, my son got on the ride, loves the swing ride, got on the ride, fairly slow day. Anyway, me and the carny guy uh, get to talking, and he forgot about the swing. And he just left, the, left those guys swinging and swinging and swinging. And uh, finally, when he sort of realized that they had had a long ride, he stopped. Interest and lots of them came out quite green. Um, anyways, fun times. But we can do the same kind of thing with this question as we did with the uh, wind turbine. So if the radius is 14 and one revolution takes 10 seconds, then I want to know how fast I'm going on the swing. Maybe press pause and try the question, then press play. Okay, so uh, my radius is 14. Got it. My angular velocity is 10 uh, one revolution in 10 seconds. So let me do that over here. So one revolution in 10 seconds. But I have to convert that to radians. So one revolution is the same as 2 pi radians. So if I multiply, so it would be 2 pi over 10, or it would be pi over 5 radians per second. So that's what I'm going to use for my angular velocity. So linear velocity is equal to the radius, 14 uh, meters, times pi over 5 rads per second. So um, again, the, don't worry about the rads now. So my answer is in meters per second. So I'd have 14 pi over 5 meters per second. Again, I'd probably use the 3.14 for pi, figure out what that comes out to, 8 point something or other. But again, this is in meters per second, so it would be nice uh, to convert this into um, kilometers an hour. So let's do that. So um, I've seen that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer, and there's also 3,600 seconds in one hour. Meters cancel, seconds cancel, my units in the end are kilometers per hour. Now I just have to figure out what that number is. Okay, bring out decimals. So 14 pi over 5. And let's go over. And then 1 divided by 1,000. And there's, uh-oh. Times one. There's different ways you can do this too. You could put all the denominators together and all of the numerators. That would work too. 3600 over 1. Perfect. So 31.7, call it. So on the ride, if you were on that ride, you'd be going 31.7 kilometers an hour. Okay, so um, in this model then, we've looked at radians as another way of measuring an angle or measuring a rotation. And we've seen how we can convert degrees into radians and vice versa. And then we've also looked at two formulas where we looked at uh, an angle in radians and an arc length. And then we also related uh, linear velocity to angular velocity. Okay, try the uh, uh, video quiz, the homework, and the other quiz. And if you have questions, give me a holler.